Real obstruction. Oh dear Debbie, I think you've got the wrong idea when it comes to GMOs. Yes, they've been given a really bad rep, but there's actually a lot of scientific research out there to suggest that they are not that bad. But let's get real here. GMOs are dangerous. They're causing everything from floods, heat waves, and toxic environments. I mean, welcome to Chemical City. Whoa, hang on there Debbie. Before you go signaling the May Day alert, let's break it down. So GMOs have actually been shown to help promote resistance to certain pests, diseases, and environmental conditions, which is ultimately better for everyone. In fact, a 2014 meta-analysis that measured the economic impact of genetically modified crops found that they were able to reduce pesticide use by about 37% and increase crop yield by 22% and increase profits by 68%. That's huge! And while you might think we're talking about big farm here, we're also talking about those local and generational farms. You know, those farmers who rely on their crops to feed their families and ultimately their communities, like you, Debbie. Well, good for those farmers, but I heard that GMOs kill crops instantly. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, no, Debbie. Actually, there's some research out there to suggest that GMOs may help promote longer shelf life and delay spoilage, which is great for a reduction in food waste. Also, studies show that GMOs may help with global food supply demands, which, trust me, Debbie, that's going to be key for the growing population. That's nice, but GMO foods are low in nutrients, right? Just look at these lemons. Non-GMO, GMO. I think this is That is a huge misconception and probably one of the biggest concerns when it comes to GMOs, that there's some kind of franken foods with no nutritional value. Well, after dozens of years of analyzing the safety of GMOs, a review of 33 studies found that GMOs were no less healthy or safe than their traditionally grown counterparts. In fact, in some cases, they might even be healthier. Recently, a 2016 World Food Prize was awarded to a group of scientists who developed a unique GMO sweet potato that was enriched with vitamin A. And this sweet potato was actually originally developed for areas that face food insecurities. While the original intent of some of these genetically modified crops was to address issues of malnutrition and food insecurity, I'm all for more nutrient-dense vegetables on my plate. International bodies like the World Health Organization agree that GMOs on the international market have passed rigorous safety assessments and they're not likely to present any kind of risk to human health. Well, I heard that GMOs are not tested for safety or nutrition, and I don't want none of that. Uh, let me stop you right there. Genetically modified foods in Canada go through rigorous checks and tests to ensure nutrient value and safety. In Canada, it takes about seven to 10 years of rigorous testing before any kind of GMO crop can make it to the marketplace and onto your dinner table. International bodies like the World Health Organization agree that GMOs from countries with regulatory bodies on the international market have passed safety assessments and are not likely to present any kind of risk to human health. Well, I heard that they're not doing any more tests. What's up with that? Yes, there has been a lot of public concern over this, but Health Canada isn't doing any more long-term studies on the safety of GMOs, only because they just don't see GMOs as being any different from all the other food out there. And that's probably where the critique is coming from. Okay, well, I'm still worried. Don't they cause allergies? So there might be an overall rise in allergies, and yes, some foods trigger allergies more than others, but a committee that reviewed hundreds of studies on GMOs found no relationship whatsoever between eating GMOs and the rise in allergies. Sure, there's other factors that might be able to explain the rise in allergies, but right now we're not pointing the finger at GMOs. Well, let's get real here, Abby. Aren't all of these studies biased because they're funded by big food because they want you to eat their toxic crap? Yes, biotech companies do fund research occasionally, but that doesn't mean that they can just alter the results. Plus, there's now a ton of independent research groups that have been studying GMOs and have found comparable results. Doesn't that make you feel better, Debbie? But we're killing the bees with the GMOs. What else am I gonna put on my gluten-free, organic, non-GMO bread? Okay, honey lovers, you can relax. Here's what we know. One study exposed honeybees to 50 times the dose of a variety of bacteria that's found in GMOs, and no deaths in the honeybees occurred. Another study concluded that GMO pollen and nectar were not harmful to honeybees either. 
So I think we're good on that front. So guys, here's the bottom line. This is all really just food for thought. I'm not a radical on either side of the fence. I really just don't feel strongly that there's any kind of strong good evidence out there against GMOs, but I'm still waiting on my toes to see what potentially some of those long-term effects are. And I wish it was easier to get that long-term information. Ultimately, as a dietitian, my stance and perspective is just get more vegetables and fruit in your diet in general. I don't care if they're GMO or not. If you're still unsure and you want to avoid GMOs for whatever reason, the only real way to do that is to look for organics. Oh no, I didn't even think about non-organic foods. Now I gotta cut them out too. So many foods to cut out, so hungry. No, I didn't say that, Debbie. We'll have to save that one for another video. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot. I would love to know your thoughts on GMO, so definitely leave me a comment below. If you like this video, give it the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen.